There's no denying just how popular crossovers are here in America. However, what if you needed the versatility and practicality of an SUV, but also wouldn't be caught dead driving one? Well, Audi has the perfect option for you for 2021. This is the all new A6 Allroad, a midsize luxury wagon based off of the all new fifth generation A6, but of course with the added cladding, additional ground clearance of its air suspension, and it marks the return of the A6 Allroad in the US after a 15 year long hiatus. So if you guys are in the market for a new luxury wagon and you've always wanted a mid-size Audi, is this now the right time to buy one? That's what we're here to find out. So let me first start out the walk around by putting it out there. I definitely have a slight bias toward wagons. I just love this body style because it's so different than all the crossovers that you see kind of littering the streets of America. But as you can see, this all new 2021 A6 Allroad really is one of the most attractive looking wagons that you can buy today. As you guys know, Audi has kind of been bringing back wagons to America uh, this year. We've got the A4 Allroad, which was refreshed, the A6 Allroad, and then of course the RS6 Avant, which I'm really excited to drive because that has nearly 600 horsepower. But this is kind of more of the Goldilocks version of the A6 because you have the A6 body style with the turbocharged V6 and of course this one isn't ridiculously expensive like the RS6 Avant. Now let's start off with the styling of the A6. As you guys know this is the all-new fifth generation A6. It's known internally as the C8. No it has nothing to do with the Corvette. However, I really like the overall look of this car. In fact, I tested the A7 last year. I wasn't too impressed with it, but I really like the proportions of the A6. You can see you've got the Audi corporate single frame grille at the front. Uh, you have these full uh, matrix designed LED headlights without the animation feature that you get in Europe because that's not allowed here in America. You have some silver painted accented trim here on the all road which comes standard, which by the way, if you guys don't like the silver, Audi does offer um, a black package uh, that will basically black out everything here. It's called a black optics package uh, for like $2,000. It also gives you different color wheels in this Avalon green metallic color with the beige interior. Some of you may say it looks a little bit old person. I think it looks really classy, really elegant. Really, if you guys have always wanted a Subaru Outback but wanted something a little bit classier, this is the wagon to get. Now, looking at the side profile, you can see being that it's based off of the A6 makes the all-road a longer vehicle. This is about 10 inches longer than Audi's own A4 all-road. It stretches around 195 inches long, which is about a half an inch longer versus the A6 sedan. Its wheelbase at 115 inches long is also on the longer end. This is bigger than most of the midsize SUVs out there. In fact, this is about the same length as Audi's Q8 crossover, but not quite as long as the Q7. This is an interesting kind of tweener vehicle. Now, the all-road, being that it's an all-road, basically gives you all-weather capability, and you can also take this thing off-roading because a standard four-corner air suspension is included. It gives you the ability to raise up the car about 1.8 inches. Right now, it's in its off-road setting and its highest setting, which gives you around 7.3 inches of ground clearance. That's about an inch and a half less than what you're gonna get in a Subaru Outback. Back. but I think that 7.3 is honestly enough. If you drop this down to its dynamic setting, it'll drop it down to around five inches, uh, which gives it more of like a car-like look to it. The wheels are also a 20 inch wheel that's included on this one. You can also option in a 20 inch black finished wheel if you guys go for the black optics package. Now this particular one here also has a nice panoramic sunroof, which lets in a lot of light that's included as standard equipment on all the all roads. And I also really like these uh, silver painted uh, roof rails, which um, you can also black out if you guys go for the black optics package. I really also like just the overall look of this car, even with the cladding that you get. And if you guys don't like this gray cladding, Audi for a thousand dollars will let you paint that body color colored, but it's only available on certain colors. I don't believe you can do that on the Avalon Green Metallic, which I think it looks fantastic as is. Now at the rear of this vehicle, you can see it looks practically identical to an A6. The taillights have that matrix design sequential LED. You've got LED turn signals, of course. You've got more of that chrome trim. And I also like how Audi didn't bother with those stupid fake exhausts that you find on some of their performance models. The exhausts are just cleverly hidden underneath here with some more of the silver trim, which remember you can black that out if you guys don't like that chromey look. And then when you open up the cargo area here, this is a wagon. So it actually has a really good amount of space. Now, of course, compared to the A6 sedan, which offers only around 13 and a half cubic feet, this offers a little over 30 cubic feet. So double the space what you get in the A6. And if you'd like, you can fold down the seats back here, which you can do from back in the cargo area, and that'll increase the cargo capacity, which Audi actually didn't have the specific final numbers when you have the seats folded. But to me, it looks like nearly 70 cubic feet. I was able to fit like a six foot long uh, board in here and it fit perfectly. 
um, which is very impressive considering the fact that this is just a mid-size you know, luxury wagon. All right, so I think I've established that I really like the exterior of the A6 All-Road, but what about the interior? Because with any luxury buyer, they're really gonna wanna make sure that Audi or any manufacturer put a lot of time into making this interior very nice. And as you can see at a glance, this interior is very reminiscent of the last A7 that I was in. In fact, this is the all new generation A6, remember, and everything that you like about the A6 sedan is kind of carried over into the all road. Um, it has a very nice, you know, welcoming place to spend time. I love the interior color combination of my tester with this light beige, with the two-tone, with this Avalon green ex exterior. It's got this kind of gray open pore finish wood, which is extra, it even is extended onto the door panels there with real metal trim and then when you shut the door it has a very nice solid thunk and because I have the prestige model you can just basically just click the door and it's got a soft closed door feature that's part of the $4,500 prestige package of course now <clears throat> Here's the key for the vehicle. You can see this is this uh, traditional Audi key. It's their smart key access system, system with push button start. I like the way the key feels. I like the way the key looks. Audi puts the start stop button down here by the shifter. And as you can see, it's got a power tilt and telescoping steering column, which is nice. I like the way the steering wheel looks as well. It's a very large diameter steering wheel, uh, but it feels good in your hands. It looks expensive. You've got the Audi virtual cockpit display there. You've got two um, touch screens over here. This is, of course, part of the Audi MMI touch interface. This is their newest system. You've got a 10.1 inch screen here, an 8.6 inch screen down here for your climate, along with the 12 inch virtual cockpit display over here. Um, this interior is very, very roomy feeling. It's very comfortable. I love all the tech. I love the way it looks. You've got soft touch injection molded plastic over here with some faux stitching. Uh, it is extended over here onto the door panels where this is also soft touch. This looks more like real stitching to me on the door panels versus on the dash. Love the wood, love the alloy trim. It's nice and padded over here. The window controls, you can see they're metal. They're one touch for all four. You've got power folding mirrors as well. Two person memory seats. My tester is missing uh, the massage seat function. That's part of a $2,500 luxury package. You do have like a, a 14 way power adjustment on both sides, of course. Um, although I would probably spring for the uh, luxury package to get the heated or the massaging seats. You can see Audi does also include heated and cooled seats. Um, that is standard, of course, on the uh, prestige trim that I'm showing you. Uh, and it all works very well. This is very familiar to any other Audi product that I've been, that I've shown you guys. And you can kind of get in this car and there isn't too much of a steep learning curve versus like a Mercedes, for example. But I will say that the Audi MMI touch interface here, it shows fingerprints pretty easily once you start touching this thing. Uh, good thing Audi gives you a massive cloth to kind of keep that clean. Uh, which is good, you're gonna be using that uh, a fairly uh, good amount of time. Now, when you put the vehicle in reverse, you can see nice 360 top-down camera. This car also has like a parallel parking feature, parking sensor, you can see it's pretty much one of the best cameras in the industry, Audi, Mercedes, and BMW do a really great job, although the other manufacturers are definitely starting to uh, catch up. You also have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which as you can see, my phone is now running iOS 14 and it's got a couple of changes to it, like the background is slightly different. This is my first time actually seeing iOS 14 there. Um, this is all, of course, you know, very seamless. As soon as I get into the car, the wireless CarPlay starts right up uh, and you don't have to use your, you don't have to plug in your phone or anything like that, which is great. Down here, you can see there's your climate control system. Um, Audi also gives you some of these little shortcut widgets. You've got a heads up display that my tester has. It's part of the prestige package, which is very nice. Your drive mode selector is over here. You can see when you start cycling through that, there's a dynamic, there's an auto, there's an all road, there's a comfort. When you switch it to the off-road mode here, you can see um, this actually will raise the vehicle suspension up because it comes standard with the air suspension. It raises it up about 1.8 inches total, so this car will give you a total of 7.3 inches of ground clearance depending on what drive mode you're in. You've got a volume uh, knob over here where you can skip track. You've got your driver assistance button over here where you can adjust how much you know interference or that you want it to give you. Um, this shifter here controls the seven speed dual clutch transmission. As I said, it's weird because Audi puts a dual clutch on their base engines, but on the performance models, like an S6, for example, they give you an eight speed auto. Love the wood here, it feels very high quality. This also is very nice. It's actually adjustable as well, the armrest. What I don't like about this car is this storage bin over here is very shallow. I wish Audi had made this a little bit deeper so I could store some more stuff in here. You can see with my phone uh, with or with my wallet, my keys, 
like several masks and sunglasses. It's pretty much full in here. Um, so it would, be, it would be nice if Audi made this a little bit deeper. The seats, I also find them to be pretty comfortable, although I'm surprised it doesn't have a thigh extender. I was kind of expecting them to give us that. My guess is the luxury package includes that. But the seats themselves are covered with this really soft, high quality leather that feels really good, that's comfortable, that's supportive. You can see there's a pretty large glove box here, which is good because I've been storing more stuff that doesn't fit in the center console in there. And then my above me, you can see my tester has uh, a very large, panoramic sunroof, although it doesn't take up the entire uh, roof. There's a nice little structure here that kind of cuts it into two pieces, but I like the fact that they give you a pano sunroof. You have basically all LED lighting in the cabin here, which is nice. Um, that's pretty much what you expect with a luxury brand. So overall, this interior is is a winner for me. I love all the technology. I love the space that they give you. I love how it's relatively easy to use and it just feels expensive. It smells expensive in here. It's basically what you expect from an Audi, um, especially if you guys are looking for a luxury wagon. Now, being that this is based off of the A6 sedan, you actually do have a pretty good amount of space back here when you get into the second row. Audi says you get around 37 and a half inches of legroom, which is a pretty good amount, especially when you're comparing it to the compact wagons, uh, the compact luxury wagons. This is about the same sp space that you get from something like a Subaru Outback, which is a mainstream wagon that's half the price. Now, in terms of features back here, there's a pretty good amount because remember, this is an A6. You can see there's a four zone automatic climate control back here, which is nice. You have uh, three level heated seats back here which is also great. You have two reseat air vents. You have these two map pockets here. And then if you fold this down, Audi also gives you an armrest here with cup holders, a little bit more storage. And the materials back here are pretty nice. You have you know, soft touch um, stitching here, real wood. The Bang & Olufsen sound system on this particular one here is actually the standard one. Uh, it sounds fantastic. And I also really like these sunshades that come with the wagon, they really help to you know block out the sun. There's also a nice pa uh, panoramic sunroof here, which actually has two different you know areas where you can actually close this screen here individually of the front. So if the front passengers want sun, but the rear passengers don't, Audi kind of gives you that option. So overall, if you need to actually you know carry people, adults back here or a car seat. The A6 Allroad still uh, does a really good job at that. Now, underneath the hood of the A6 Allroad, you're actually going to find just one powertrain option. You need to go up to the RS6 Avant if you want more power, but this is the good powertrain for this vehicle. It's Audi's three liter turbocharged, it's a single turbo V6 with direct injection. Um, and it also pairs together a 48 volt mild hybrid system. So instead of drive belts, this thing replaces that with an electric motor, a small one that basically will allow this thing to have very seamless start stops. It'll kind of help add a little bit of torque at low revs, which Audi says it doesn't actually add to the output of the V6, but it makes pretty good numbers, 335 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. It all goes out through, of course, Audi's Quattro all-wheel drive system that's standard on the all-road through a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission. That's one of the biggest difference you're gonna get with the all-road versus something like an Audi Q8, which has an eight-speed ZF automatic. This has a dual-clutch. Audi says zero to 60 performance is also pretty impressive, 5.1 seconds, which actually matches the zero to 60 performance of an Audi SQ5, and you also get something that's more car-like and a little bit sportier for me when you guys are going around corners. Uh, in terms of fuel economy, it's not, it's rated actually pretty good at 22 in the city, 26 on the highway. Premium gas is required, of course. On longer trips, I was actually able to break 30 miles to the gallon easily, which makes this thing very fuel efficient. The A6 All-Road is a little bit heavier than the sedan counterpart. As this one sits, it weighs 4,486 pounds or about 200 pounds heavier than the sedan. So I've had an opportunity to drive so many Audis throughout my career of driving all these different cars. And I have to say, an Audi Audi wagon has always eluded me for quite some time until now. This is the first time that I'm getting a chance to drive uh, an Audi wagon and it's been 15 years, as I said before, since we've seen an A6 all-road. Back then they used to just call this thing the all-road. They didn't actually have the A6 because remember Audi has two wagons in the US. They have the A4 all-road and the A6 all-road. This is the bigger, more expensive luxury oriented model, which they're both luxury, but this is the bigger one with the V6. And I have to say, my first impressions on this car are seriously super positive. I don't know if it's because I'm just getting old as I, as I go into my 30s, but as a daily driver, this is incredible. It is one of the smoothest, smoothest driving cars I have ever driven. Now, it's interesting because last year I tested an Audi A7. I liked the car, but I wasn't really as impressed with it as I was with this car. Just 
for my initial first impressions. It is so damn quiet in here. It is so refined. The air suspension gives you this pillowy, comfortable ride, even in dynamic mode. I have it in dynamic mode right now, and it's sporty setting, and it's just, it glides like a cloud over the road imperfections. It is so comfortable, it is so quiet. This Prestige model has these triple sealed thicker glass, so you really hear very little noise in here. Now, of course, some enthusiasts may argue that this is too refined because you don't really hear the engine, you don't really feel much of a visceral experience, but remember, this is a family car. This is supposed to be something that you can put your spouse in, your kids, all your pets, all your crap that you've got, and it has plenty of space in the trunk, in the back seat, in the interior. This is for really for the wagon that enthusiasts have been begging for because it is so much cooler to me than any SUV, especially you know when you start looking at the higher price tags of these things. Now, in terms of the driving feel, I do notice that I, I sit a little higher than a typical sedan, although in dynamic mode here, the car hunkers down about a half inch and it feels like I'm driving a regular car, but you can kind of plop it into um, the all road mode here which the car will raise itself up a little bit and it should give you uh, that slightly higher seating position. I do notice that the you know suspension got a little bit softer, the steering got a little bit softer. Um, all the driver assistance tech that my tester has is part of the Prestige package and it's standard on this trim. Um, so you do need to go for that higher trim, of course, to get it. Um, the seats are also very comfortable. I can see out of it really well. This is just such a serene car that I love driving. It is just incredible to me how well this thing drives. And because the all-road comes standard with their turbocharged V6 with their 48 volt mild hybrid system, this thing has plenty of power. Audi actually says it'll get to 60 in around 5.1 seconds, which is plenty of speed. And remember, if you want more speed, Audi does offer the RS6 Avant, which is literally twice the price of this thing, but you also get like almost 200 more horsepower, or actually more than 200 more horsepower, and it's got that twin turbo V8. That of course is a different review, but I have to say if the regular R a6, you know, all road feels this good. I don't even want to begin to imagine how much I'm going to want the RS6 Avant. Ooh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, the cool thing about this car is because it has a dual clutch, it actually has launch control, which is hilarious because you wouldn't even think this thing has launch control. All you do is put it in dynamic, turn the stability control until it's sport setting, floor the brake and the accelerator, and it takes off pretty impressively. Um, it definitely feels like a 5.1 second car, but it's also stealthy because you don't expect this wagon to be so fast. So like that pesky, you know, Civic Type R next to you at the light, this thing will smoke them at the light, you know, especially because you've got the all-wheel drive Quattro traction. And you also have a manual mode here with the within the transmission. Ooh. Ooh, the torque of this thing. Because of that mild hybrid system, the electric motor just gives you the torque to fill in the gaps. Now, it does have a fair amount of lag when you guys are driving this in its comfort mode, but... Oh my God. <laughs> when you put this thing into dynamic mode, into a sport setting, it it is just amazingly quick and amazingly smooth. You don't feel the speed in this thing. This is everything that I want from a luxury wagon. I'm in love with this car. It is probably the best family car that I've driven all year. And I don't take that saying very lightly, but oh my God, like this is to me way better than a Volvo wagon because I love the smoothness of the engine. I love the fact that it's a V6, not that turbo supercharged four cylinder. Um, I love the interior of this car. The tech is a little bit better than the Volvos because it works a lot better. It works more consistently than the Volvos. And, you know, it handles extremely well. The chassis feels so solid. It's so refined. Like, I can't talk about enough praise for this thing. I mean, my only criticism is it's so bloody expensive, but hey, you gotta pay for something that's this refined, right? <laughs> now this thing definitely isn't what I would say like, you know, a sporty wagon. I'm gonna really have to drive the RS6 Avant. You feel even dyna in dynamic mode, she's a soft wagon and the suspension gets a little bit floaty. It ha it'll understeer a tad when you really start pushing it. Um, I really need to also drive the Mercedes E-Class wagon because they're also coming out with that all-track uh, E-Class wagon. But I will say that I think the Audi looks better. I think it definitely looks better on the outside for me. And that's the whole point of why you bought a wagon, isn't it? Because you wanted it to stand out in terms of its looks. Wow. 
Oh my God, what a freaking car. I love this thing. I love it. I wasn't expecting to like this car this much, but I absolutely freaking love it. God, it is such a smooth noise. I mean, even though it's not very loud, smoothness, refinement, that's, that's the whole point of buying the A6 Allroad. I mean, she's an expensive wagon, but you feel how expensive this thing is when you're behind the wheel. I'm just, I'm in love. And the other thing that you can also love about this thing is because it's a mild hybrid system with this turbocharged V6, it gets pretty good gas mileage. I drove this thing up to New York uh, for a media event, for a quick media event. And, and that's about a 500 mile round trip here from DC. And this thing easily got 30 miles to the gallon, 30 miles to the gallon. And I was, it was showing a 530 mile cruising range on this 19 gallon gas tank. That is just insane. Now it does require you to use premium gas in it, but hey, it's a turbocharged V6 Audi wagon. I'll, I'll, put, I'll feed it the good stuff because it is just so darn impressive with the fuel economy, with the power, with the refinement, with the luxury, with the space. Like this is what, Everything I expect a luxury wagon to be. I mean, sure, Audi could offer this thing with more horsepower. I'd love to see them do like an S6 Avant here in the US. An extra 100 horsepower would be wonderful. But, you know, if you've got the, the cash, be sure to check out the RS6 Avant because that one does start at over 110,000. But this one here, you know, at 60, 68,000 to start, you feel like it's money well spent, especially if you can afford it, especially if you want something super unique versus all of those those SUVs that you just see, you know, crowding up American roads. So I'm gonna try to finish off this video without sounding super biased, but after spending a week with the A6 Allroad, I have to say, this vehicle seriously impressed me a lot more than I thought it would. I mean, sure, I love wagons, I love Audis, I like the size of the thing, but really spending a week with it, driving it on longer trips, just living with it, it's got an amazing ride quality, it has plenty of power, it has a really nice tech on the inside, a lot of space, a lot of room, a lot of luxury, and really, if you guys have always wanted an Audi luxury station wagon, now is the perfect time to buy one of these things because you're just incredibly different. I actually had a surprising amount of people do double takes on this thing. I don't know if it was the color or it's the fact that it's an Audi wagon that got a lot of people's attention, but really it's the perfect family car, especially if you guys hate SUVs. And I'm not really the biggest fan of SUVs. Sure, I understand why so many people like them, but really a wagon, a mid-sized wagon like this is the perfect all around car because it just offers such a great balance of everything. Of course, if you guys want one of these things, it isn't a cheap date. In fact, you could easily get something like a Subaru Outback for about half the price, but the Subaru is very common. It also rides a lot higher. You feel like you're driving an SUV. This thing with its adjustable air suspension can feel exactly like a car. And then when you jack it up into its off-road mode, you could theoretically take it into off-pavement situations. But just know that if you want something like this, you're going to have to want this body style. It is a niche type of car and it has a niche type of starting price. This thing starts at $65,900, which is a lot of money. This makes it about $11,000 more expensive versus an A6 sedan. Now you should keep in mind that the A6 Allroad comes standard as a premium plus model and it comes standard with the V6 engine. If you guys option in those features on the A6 sedan, it's gonna be around $63,000. So really the reality and price difference is about $2,000. But you should also know that you could get something like an Audi Q5 for about $10,000 less. This is also uh, even more expensive than an Audi Q7, their biggest SUV, which doesn't necessarily make sense. Now, of course, my tester here, being that it's a prestige model, starts at around $71,400. With the color option, with the upgraded sound system, with the dynamic four wheel steering that this one has and the upgraded interior, this one here stickers for around $74,000, which is pretty expensive. You could also option in two extra additions, the sport package, um, the uh, Bang & Olsen sound system, of course, uh, and the luxury seating package, which includes the massaging seats. That's the one's missing that. You could fully load an A6 all road to be around $84,000, which is again, very expensive, but the only competitor of this car is the Mercedes-Benz E-Class all-terrain, which is actually about two to $5,000 more expensive. But I do feel like the A6 all road is a slightly better value than the Mercedes. It offers most of the tech and it's a much fairer price because I built fully loaded versions of the Benz and that car was easily costing 
over $90,000. So if you guys are actually in the market for a luxury wagon, please buy one of these because I feel like Audi brought it here for enthusiasts. So I really wanna see more of these out on the road. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2021 A6 All Road. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.